All right, I think we are ready to go. Okay, so um, we're going to tell you about the project that we did at Chibo, um, where we're trying to uh, predict demand um, with transformer models. Um, this is Sören, I'm Kai, and uh, yeah, we're going to tell you about the project that we did at Chibo. So first, um, I'm not working at Chibo, so um, 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 my employee is Data Drivers, a consulting firm. Um, we're doing lots of uh, data-centric projects, um, cloud migrations, and of course, AI and data science projects. And now Zeron is going to um, tell you so something about Chibo and what Chibo is. Uh, hello from my side too. So I'm a data scientist at uh, Chibo. Many of you might know uh, Chibo as a brand that has a ridiculously high brand recognition in Germany. Um, so Chibo started out as, um, uh, as a coffee firm, um, probably the first um, coffee startup after World War II, and with this mind-blowing idea of sending uh, coffee packages to their customers by postal service. Uh, that was uh, kind of new, but later on, of course, um, expanded its business to having uh, stores and uh, is also present at point of sales in um, your favorite retailer, probably. Um, yeah, and nowadays Chibo is um, it does business in numerous countries, um, mainly in Central but also in Eastern Europe, um, and is one of the largest supplier of sustainably uh, grown coffee. So what that entails for um, for the company is that it needs a wide logistics distribution network. It has a lot of uh, data from customer service, e-commerce business, logistics, market analysis, and so on and so forth. So um, that basically is a, is a huge um, playground um, doing nice data stuff and data services, uh, a, a huge playground for new services that we, uh, we can develop. And there's a lot of room for optimization. So, um, Today we want to showcase one, one of the projects um, at Chivo and um, what we did there. And this is the focus um, this time on logistics. So what you, can you expect? Um, we want to tell you how we did our predictions uh, using Google Cloud services. Um, and of course, um, Kai will go into details about the architecture and um, how we achieve scaling. But also we want to tell you how um, we've been kind of been organizing our project a bit. So how we divided the, the project into microservices and what that entails um, on the one side for the architecture, but also um, how we can um, leverage this to develop um, um, at the services and um, in decoupling logical components. So um, a brief insight into into the use case at hand. Um, consider that um, the Chibo customer is supplied um, or the, everything from the um, uh, from one single warehouse uh, goes to our webshop customers, and this uh, single central uh, this single warehouse is um, um, is fed from a central warehouse. Um, but this uh, central warehouse also distributes goods to the brick and mortar stores and also to the point of sales and the retailers. So you have a kind of classical um, optimization problem here at hand. Um, if you want to know what kind of or how many wares, what kind of goods you want to um, distribute between these warehouses so that on the one side, you don't uh, kind of borrow business from your brick and mortar or your, your other uh, stores. Um, so if you oversupply this warehouse, then you might have um, enhanced logistic costs because you have to you have to transport back and forth. But on the one uh, on the other side, you don't have any more wares that you can distribute to the stores. Um, that is one side of the problem, and the other side would be you well uh, you kind of deliver too few goods to your B2C warehouse. And that would mean that you lose business probably with your webshop customers, because then you might run into the risk of uh, going out of stock at some point. So to tackle this problem, there, were, um, there was uh, one 
there was a classical approach um, already in use, um, focusing. Well, that was done in the in the um, um, ERP in the central system, and that uh, basically was kind of. Um, deductive model taking demand distribution curves, curves into account and uh, manually entering correcting factors and so on. Um, we wanted to uh, do a step a level better, level up, and um, wanted to implement a state of the art machine learning approach for this in Chivo's um, big data analytics platform. So the focus here was to achieve a high level of automation, uh, to be fully data driven, to have no manual corrections and so on. And um, also to leverage more and more features that we are able to um, well, gather and incorporate in our um, platform. And also the uh, horizon of the forecast uh, was uh, dramati dramatically increased to about 12 weeks. So. Immediately, <laughs> we recognize that uh, we will have the th three basic problems at hand. We need um, kind of, um, um, we need to scale, we need good data, and we need a model that can, um, that can uh, incorporate all these different kind of um, data that we want to put in. Um, yeah, and uh, we knew also that uh, one thing we will uh, we will suffer from is that um, Chibo products have a rather short product life cycle. Um, maybe you know the slogan um, Jede Woche eine neue Themenwelt. Um, this means that we have a lot of articles that we've never seen before and this uh, is basically a problem uh, doing time series analysis. So we wanted to find a model that uh, can help us in all these uh, steps and um, yeah Basically, this is now what um, um, Kai is going to talk about, uh, namely our, our solution to this, and we want to present it just for you. Thanks. So uh, we tried several, uh, several approaches, several models, and we came up with one solution. We uh, stuck with Google's fusion trans uh, temporary fusion transformer, mainly because the Temporary Fusion Transformer is able to integrate categorical and real variable, uh, variables um, and it also distinguishes between historical, future and static way, uh, variables. So in a sense um, you can integrate a lot of different kinds of input data into one model and use it for your prediction without um, having to um, pre-process it in any way um, to make it yeah to make it to make it available in the model um, also it has this explainability component that um, you can have a look at your input and have a look at what kind of impact this variable has on the end result of the model in which time step uh, so in short for our use case um, it was a very good uh, fit because it uses um, similar time series to um, to predict um, an unknown article or um, an article that is already seen but um, in newer time steps. And um, this helped us because as I already said, um, we have very short uh, time series objects and um, we cannot simply apply the usual time series forecasting algorithms. So how did we bring this model into production? So it is a neural network, it is very complex, and um, this is what we had to, um, yeah, had to concern us with. Um, we used GCP-related technologies, so of course we went to the Google Cloud, um, we used B Google BigQuery as our um, data store to, um, to create a feature store to, um, to use all the data that is available in, inside the Chibo world. And uh, we're using TensorFlow to um, execute the model, to train it, and um, yeah, to do the inference. Um, all our big data processing has been done by uh, Google Dataflow or Apache Beam. We are using Terraform to basically roll out all our, um, all our code, all our applications, and our infrastructure. Um, we have GitLab for our CI CD and for our code repository, and we use MLflow to um, keep track of our model and um, supply it to our inference pipelines. So, we created an event driven microservice architecture. So, what you basically see here is that we have this Chibo universe here 
where every data basically comes in. And what is happening is that we have this data uh, intelligence project, which transforms the data from SAP into the Google Cloud, into a data vault, where we can then access all the live data in the GB universe. And with this data, we can then consolidate a feature store where we do our feature engineering, where we do our ATL um, pipelines, and then have one table with all the features in the end. Uh, we also have, of course, a training, uh, training module, um, the model store is MLflow, and we're also doing simulations and some kind of reporting to get a look and feel on how the model performs and um, to have yeah, something to validate. Um, we have the prediction pipeline, with, um, which is basically doing all our uh, infer inference and where the pre-processing pre and the, the model is being loaded into and in the end a delivery, which goes then back into the SAP universe. Now I'm going to go a bit more into detail about the, um, the prediction process. So what we have here is um, we have different components, as I said, the feature store and the predictor. And in the beginning, we consolidate the feature store. So we have one data flow job that uh, taps into every data source that we have and um, does our feature engineering and then consolidates all of this data into one table, which we can then use to uh, do predictions and training. The predictor itself is then being triggered after this uh, data flow job has been finished. And um, this is being p done with a, with by publishing just a simple event on the predictor uh, topic. And this then triggers a cloud function, which then starts another data flow job. Um, this data flow job then um, from MLflow loads our state for pre-processing, which is a TF transform pre-processing graph, where everything that the model has been seen in the training, all the categorical variables are encoded, um, every scaling, everything that is basically stateful in the pre-processing is being stored in and can be applied and um, used for inference. Um, also, the model is being loaded from, uh, from MLflow and being used inside the data flow job. So everything is basically loaded onto each worker being applied there. And um, then after the prediction has been finished, everything is then turned down again. And in the end, we have our deliveries. So we have basically after the predictor finishes, we have a huge um, BigQuery table where all the predictions sit in. And then we do our delivery, which is basically cloud functions executing um, SQL statements to do some mappings and um, some data cleansing. And in the end, then we have our um, exporting job, which basically puts um, all the data that we have now created with our delivery into a specific GCS bucket, from which then the um, SAP data intelligence can then port it back into the SAP Cosmos. So in the end, we have three different components here. So we have an architecture, which is basically event-driven. We have the microservice architecture. Um, by separating production and training, we were able to uh, reuse code. We have used a lot of um, libraries where we can code once the, um, the workflow, basically, of the application, and then make distinctions between training and, um, and production. We have one Git repository for each com uh, for each microservice, and then we can there distinguish between different architects, uh, artifacts for production and training. We have a central model management, which is being done by MLflow. We can uh, set up experiments. We can store our pre-processing there. We can store some kind of da uh, our data there and have everything available under one model, one uh, model version, and then everything is basically propagated from there. So we can also say, for example, we want to now have this um, model X in version Z, and we can basically put that into our system and let it deploy by, for example, Terraform in this case. We have a uh, TensorFlow transform as our state for pre-processing that is being stored under that model and is being loaded into our data flow job by that model. And um, in the end, this architecture is then being rolled out in deployment um, using git tags we can uh, version our with, with which we version our code 
and uh, just by switching GitLab environment variables, we can roll out different model versions and easily, for example, also roll back if we have found an error in some version. Um, this decoupling of code ba uh, from deployments and um, building the code gives us the opportunity to bring or to build the code artifacts, but not just automatically set them live. So it's not continuous deployment, but uh, one step back, um, which basically helped us in, in our development process in the beginning now. And in the end, yeah, everything is managed via Terraform and the code, um, the Terraform code is then in each module. So each module, each microservice is self-contained. So in the end, we have a TFT architecture. We have a model that is quite, um, yeah, quite complex, um, but we found it um, suitable for uh, our data and of course the Jibo business model um, because of the short time series objects. We have um, found out that we can basically scale this kind of architecture up fairly quickly using Google Cloud Services. And of course, the combination between Apache Beam and TensorFlow, so TensorFlow Transform, um, gives us the opportunity to process or pre-process large amounts of data on a big scale and use this then to um, yeah, feed the data into a uh, TensorFlow model. So this kind of whole environment um, enabled us to um, yeah, do this project fairly quickly. And in the end, then the separation between the microservices and the components allowed us to parallelly work on different components. So we were um, able to, with two people work, for example, on the feature store, two, uh, one, one person could have a look at the prediction already and some other, p um, some other guys were working on some, something like the infrastructure or um, the reporting part. So this yeah, worked fairly well for us and um, yeah, we're going to continue doing it this way. And um, yeah, this is basically our talk. So this is us. Um, yeah. The final remark from my side and probably in, in the spirit of both our employers is, <laughs> as you have seen, I'm not no HR expert in the beginning, but I'm for this audience, I think it's uh, suitable to say there's a lot to be done. There's fancy data, really intriguing use cases at hand and uh, fantastic colleagues and a nice team. So if you if we are always looking for seasoned developers and data specialists, but also uh, new tech talents. So if you if you like, please get in touch with us, but also um, to have a chat about the technology and this project if you have encountered um, difficulties or if you have different experiences, then please just uh, talk to us. We are, we are here for your questions now and thank you for your attention. Thank you.